Dear future husband, I got into a fender bender today. It was so scary. Thankfully, I'm okay. Emma, my best friend. Do you do you know Emma? We met in college. She was in the car with me. We're both okay. It was in one of those roundabouts. I hate those roundabouts. Thankfully, the car is getting fixed, but it made me think, can you please make sure we have like roadside assistance? Nothing is scarier than car trouble. Hi, it's Bailey with She Said Yes, a podcast about getting married. We're coming up on the last few episodes of our show, and they're going to be a lot of fun. Up until now, we've been finding venues, dresses, photographers, and a lot of other important things we'll need that day. And now it's time to start thinking about our guests. How can we make sure that they're having just as much fun as we're going to be having on our wedding day? So the next couple of episodes, we'll be focusing on how to make this wedding a party to remember. And when was the last time you went to a party that didn't have food? Dear future husband, I love you. And don't worry, I'll say yes. She Said Yes is presented by White of Dublin. To learn more about how they make your wedding dress experience comfortable, personal, and all about you, visit whitebridalboutiques.com. A few weeks ago, we talked about how some restaurants will cater weddings, but most of the times those restaurants will have different menus for events, and it's not always the same food. So before you pick a cater, it's usually a good idea to sit down with them and sample their food. It can be fun to make a date out of it, and a lot of couples will do that with their baker too. So one day she was praying for me and didn't know that I wanted to start my own business and got a vision of me in a pink apron um, in my own bakery and just was like, I just feel like this is something the Lord has for her. And like, I'm, I don't know, is she open to like thinking about that? Little did she know I'm like on the edge of like, should I start this business? Should I not? This is Ashley, owner of A Pink Apron Bakery in Dublin, Ohio. A Pink Apron offers a variety of cupcakes, muffins, cookies, cakes for weddings and other special occasions. But that's not all of it. Most of Ashley's products are vegan friendly and even gluten free. And her businesses just doesn't cater to events. She also uses her platform to create change in the nutritional equality of Central Ohio. And so I told her if I started something that I would name it after Aunt Angie's vision of the pink apron. Um, so that's kind of where it started. And then I threw in an A in there for Ashley and Aunt Angie. So a little bit of the namesake there. Um, in college, I just developed a passion for um, low income areas that don't have access to healthy foods. And this kind of, it sounds like a weird way to tie into a bakery, but I also had a passion for entrepreneurship and I knew I wanted to do some kind of um, entrepreneurial thing. So something with business, um, thinking about starting my own business. And I also love the restaurant industry. So a lot of moving parts, but eventually I decided I wanted to open my own bakery business because I love to bake. Um, and I just, again, loved that industry. Low income areas in cities such as Columbus can become zones called food deserts, which means the people who live there have to travel a long distance to get to grocery stores or markets with fresh nutritional foods rather than just having them in their neighborhoods. Ashley is working to change that. With the business, um, I'm using the profits to partner with a nonprofit called Local Matters, who they do um, a lot of that work and and just help with nutrition education in the inner city and um, nutrition help and aid um, with places that don't have access to grocery stores. So I'm partnering with them now. I would love to eventually partner with them more or start my own nonprofit or something along those lines. I just love what they do. I think it's amazing that they are in just those um, areas that don't have access to grocery stores and walking distance and um, are doing things in schools and inner cities. So love partnering with them. They are amazing. And then another nonprofit that I just um, absolutely adore and has been really fun to work with is called Food Rescue US. Um, So what they do is they'll go to restaurants and other small businesses and they will take leftover food that's going to go bad um, and bring it to homeless shelters or other places in need um, and just bring that food that is going to go to waste anyways, uh, to those places. And, um, and they have volunteers who really will pick it up at any time. You just kind of plug it in the app and they come to you and they just make it really, really easy to, yeah, drop over, drop off the leftover food so they can take it to other places. So I love working with them. I think they're amazing. And yeah, it's been fun to be able to be like, okay, these cupcakes are just going to go to waste or, and I would just rather them go to, you know, someone in need. 
You can learn more about Ashley's partnership with Local Matters on her website, which we'll leave in the show notes of today's episode. What makes you guys special besides having the best name, a pink apron, besides <laughs> that and a great color yes, scheme? Yes. What are some other things that are really make you guys special? Yeah, so I would say, um, not to my own horn. No, I, toot away, just, toot away. <laughs> I will say I do think we have the best vegan and gluten-free goodies in Columbus. So it's really hard. Um, I noticed too with starting the bakery, I wasn't going to kind of go that route, but I just noticed there's a need for it. Um, there's a lot more allergies. I think popping up and people are trying to also just be more health conscious. And so um, I just don't think there's a ton of desserts that are doing that really well. Um, And so I just started playing around with some of the recipes with gluten free. It's really hard to get that texture, right? A lot of times it can be really grainy or kind of stringy. Um, So I feel like I've gotten that texture down where it it kind of tastes pretty similar to our normal goods. Um, And then the vegan things I I would say are pretty seamless. Like a lot of times I'll, um, um, try to give some to my friends and family and just see how they react and be like, by the way, it's vegan. And like, I, they typically don't notice. So most of the goodies on Ashley's website have gluten-free options available, which is super cool. If your event might need to cater to guests who have dietary restrictions, such as allergies or celiac disease, Over the years, she's been able to do a lot of research and developments to make her recipes really stand out. We have some vegan options, some gluten-free options, um, some that are neither, some that are both. Um, So really we can, we try to cater to every allergy and like every needs. I think our most popular thing on our menu is our cupcakes. Um, And we do mini and full size. And those have been really popular at weddings actually. Um, Guests love just something bite-sized. So that the mini cupcakes are just so easy to kind of take and go and the full size cupcakes kind of um, a lot of people have been using them to replace cakes. I think cakes are still really fun if you want that, but a lot of people aren't big cake people. And so I think cupcakes have been kind of a good substitution. Ashley and her team can bake almost any baked good you can possibly imagine. And she's always up for a challenge. We love doing custom orders too. So um, if there's something, a flavor that's like not on my menu or something I don't typically offer, I love to work with people if they have like a favorite. Like one year um, we had a wedding cake request that was funfetti and I had never done funfetti before. And I was like, that's so interesting for a wedding cake, but it was the bride's favorite. It was like a childhood thing that was like very nostalgic for her. So that was really fun to like bring that to life a little bit and come up with a recipe that I really loved and now is like a staple thing for us. Um, And then also have something that she got to enjoy on her yeah. special day. So I love doing like custom requests and things like that and just trying to stretch myself and um, grow in that way too. So let's talk a little bit about that customization. Let's talk a little bit about, let's say you have a bride and groom who are like, hey, we love your bakery. We want to learn more about, you know, what kind of cakes you offer, what that looks like, um, you know, what customization to make sure that their wedding cake is a seamless part of their wedding where it reflects their theme and stuff like that. What does that process look like with you? Yeah, so typically with um, customers, new or returning, I like to just hop on a phone call with them, really get their vision for what they want their day to look like, what they want their dessert table to look like, um, and I'll send pictures of like different styles that I've done in the past as far as wedding cakes go, or different even like table decor, and we actually have um, a ton of like tiers and like glass um, cake table things okay. and set up, stuff like that, so we can bring those two, we, we do set up and tear down. So I really just um, am all about wanting to make everyone's wedding day like what they want it to be. Since most of us who are listening have never actually planned a wedding before, we've also probably never ordered a wedding cake. So Ashley was able to help make that process a lot easier and explained how it all works. We start with their guest count. So typically um, couples will kind of give me a rough estimate of what they're looking for. And then it'll be, you know, narrowed down once they're a little bit closer to their date. So kind of just starting with that rough estimate is really helpful. Like, okay, is this going to be a micro wedding? Is it going to be 250 people? Like, what are we looking at Um, relatively? And then from there, um, often... So again, I will kind of say, I think um, we are moving a little bit more towards having those like mini desserts rather than like cake to serve for all of the guests. Um, And that does cut costs down a lot too. So I am definitely willing to make a really extravagant, really beautiful cake, but it definitely just even cost of ingredients for that is, um, is more 
you know, extreme than mm-hmm. just having like some mini desserts. So a lot of times I will kind of steer guests into like, you could just do a one tier cake to cut. Um, if that's something you're interested in for pictures and then, um, have mini cupcakes, have cookies, like whatever desserts that you think your guests will love, um, kind of in lieu of a giant yeah. four or five tier wedding cake. Um, that's going to cost a lot of money for <laughs> the couple. So that's another thing is I love to like work with people's budgets and mm-hmm. try to like lower costs as much as I can. You know, if I know that it can stack up, especially for yeah. your wedding day. And I definitely don't want to be, um, one of the vendors that that's like, um, adding to. So I, yeah, do, do love to work with couples who are on a budget. And, um, I think one way that we can do that is kind of, uh, looking more at the one or two tier cakes and having maybe some mini cupcakes for guests instead of cutting the cake for everyone. I thought since Ashley was running a pretty small bakery, it would be more difficult for her to accommodate larger and more time sensitive orders. But it turns out it's actually the opposite. The nice thing about going with a small business is because I'm still small, I'm kind of able to accommodate, um, more bookings than typical. I'm not fully booked up for the summer or the fall. So it's kind of, um, it's easier for me to take last minute bookings, Mm -hmm. um, than I think it would be for maybe some other, uh, dessert places that book up way in advance, um, which can be true in the wedding industry. It can get pretty crazy, um, with needing to book in advance. But so I would really say, I mean, more time, the better for just to have that advanced notice. Um, but really like maybe a couple weeks before is I can still typically accommodate that. Ashley loves taking special requests, even one very special request that I had. Do you have a no smash policy? Um, something <laughs> Matt and I question. are like working on is like, okay, I'm trying to get him like in blood to put that he will not smash into my face. So like, would you be able to like just insert like a no oh, smash man. clause like as when they sign with you of like, I, the groom, promise yes. I will not smash this in my bride's face. Like, I love that question. Yeah. For you, Bailey, I would definitely create you. a clause. Thank Absolutely. You. Yes. Do you hear that, Matt? Do you hear that? I'm getting that in writing. No cake smash. Baker's orders. Typically, that's not um, something I enforce, but if you want a clause, I can I, do. I can do that I for you. I definitely will need a no <laughs> smash clause. I have gotten a pinky promise, but like... Okay, that's a good I don't start. Necessarily you don't trust, trust it. a pinky promise uh-huh. when it comes to this moment. So like a no smash clause would be... That would be um, helpful. Very, very helpful I, I got your me. back. I could definitely thank do that. You. Write, write you, up some you. kind of contract. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> yes. That is exactly what I need. Finally, I asked Ashley the same question I've asked a lot of our guests. What has been some of the favorite cakes or designs that you have made? What are some of those ones that like, oh, they'll always just pull on your heartstring and they'll always just do that. And additionally, what is your favorite kind of cake that you would recommend? Yeah, those are great questions. So I would definitely say um, my first cake is is always going to be one that like I look back on fondly. Um, It's funny to see how far you grow when you look back, but this was, so my first wedding cake was in the first year that I was, um, that a pink apron was a business and it was for some family friends. And I definitely would say I probably overcommitted by telling them <laughs> yes, because I had never done a wedding cake before. I was like, yeah, sure. I'll figure it out. How hard can it be? It was a two tier wedding cake. Um, another thing that's been really popular recently is one of the layers is faux. So like, uh, it's styrofoam and then the top layer is real cake and that cuts down on, on costing. So that has kind of been a trend and they asked for that. And I was like, yeah, no problem easy. Um, and I realized when I started trying and practicing, I was in way over my head, but it all came together really nicely. Um, and it was really fun to be able to kind of just, I was just really proud of that first cake because it's, you know, it was my first time. And I think that also kind of laid the groundwork for me to be able to, uh, continue to hone in on my skills with baking and stuff like that. Ashley, thank you so much for joining us today and telling us all about your beautiful and delicious cakes. And thank you especially for putting an end to the cake smash discussion. If people want to learn more about you and your services or the nonprofits you support, where can they find you? Yes. So everything is pretty cohesive, which is easy. It's a pink apron, a P I N K a P R O N. Um, that is my Instagram handle, Twitter, really everything. My website is a pink Um, so pretty easy, but I would say I'm most active on Instagram, but we also have like Facebook, Twitter, all of those things as well. Now that we've got the cake figured out, we can start to move on to some more fun aspects to serve our guests. And what goes better than sweets than coffee? 
What we do is we brand our coffee trailer to the event. Enter Lulu and Company Coffee and Sweets. We can brand everything from the sign on the side of the trailer to the menu, the cups, the napkins, really anything that you want, which makes it um, very interesting in a photo shoot. So it's always fun for social media. This is Angela, co-owner of Lulu's and Company, and her daughter, Laura, or Lulu, have been serving guests at weddings, baby showers, and sporting events for the past year out of their beautiful mobile coffee and sweets bar. Their business model is simple. Create unique coffee experience for their clients with their fully customizable coffee trailer for people and businesses all around Central Ohio. When I was in high school, I would you know, get off and go to my job and that was at a coffee shop. And when, by the time I was getting ready to graduate, my mom said, yeah, what's, what's your next step? And I said, mom, I, there's nothing else I want to do other than make coffee. So she helped me get everything, you know, put together. And this was actually my graduation present from my school. Despite being in business for only a year, Laura has been able to do several weddings and baby showers. And she was even invited to be a part of Mirfield Memorial Tournament, a major golf tournament right here in central Ohio. Not bad, Laura. I want I want to talk a little bit about the branding. So so are you telling me that on the coffee truck that it's able to say whose wedding you're at? Because I think that's such a unique thing that it won't, you know, it will still be able to be the bride and groom's day. Why don't you dig in a little bit more about that? So we will actually have um, signage printed and we can decorate the side of the trailer with your names, your date. If there's a special song or a special saying, our trailer is full is a magnet, which which makes it very unique. So we can literally put magnets on the back of anything that you may want to decorate with. They've got several pictures on their website and Instagrams of their customizable trailer, and they're not kidding. If you dream it, they can do it. It is completely customizable. So all the stickers that go on the cup, nothing is branded to us. It's all branded to the event. So even when you know people are walking around taking photos, it has the event's name on it, and people really enjoy that. Lulu's can even do custom drinks and menu options for the couples. It's so cool to see how they can get so creative with their service. We start with drip coffee. That's just in the normal plain Jane. And then we go to cold brews. We go to macchiatos, lattes. We have sugar-free options. And then we have a, a lot of dairy-free options as well. Yeah. So you have different syrups as well yes. to be able to like mm-hmm. make them like bougie and a little bit yeah. fancy. Oh, girl, and for, yes. oh yeah. <laughs> When you have an event, you choose. Mm -hmm. You choose your coffee flavors. If you want, you know, if you want three specific coffees or you want, you know, six. um, And we name them after you. So that is super fun for people. So So we name them after the bride and groom or if we're doing a baby shower, the baby and the parents. It's really amazing to see how much Laura and Angela care about their guest experience because it's not just coffee they're serving. They also have several partnerships with local businesses to bring treats to their wedding as well. So we do have relationships with Brookie's Cookies, which has phenomenal cookies. Um, And again, totally customizable. She has 12 flavors. Now, you do not have to offer sweets, but most people we find do like to offer sweets, especially at weddings. Additionally, we work with Dockside Donuts, and she has phenomenal donuts and totally customizable. I've never seen such beautiful donuts in my life. We have amazing hot chocolate. So that's really fun for, you know, if you're going to have a bunch of children at the event. And that is actually very popular. We're always surprised, even with adults, how many adults get hot chocolate. Lulu's is also able to do custom mocktails for the reception, just in case coffee really isn't your thing. And because their equipment fits in a trailer, you can take them pretty much anywhere. And then what does that timeline look like? Like of you guys coming, setting up, serving, dismantling, what does all of that look like for you guys? Um, we usually arrive, if it, like you said, 3.30, we're there by 2, 2.30. Okay. Yeah. So just about an hour, an hour and a half before, just to make sure we have everything set up, just in case there's some stragglers, <laughs> just in case. So some people come up beforehand, can we get something before the ceremony? Yeah. I'll, I'll get it too. There you go. There you go. <laughs> we are also able to be um, outside of the church. So okay. you, know, you always have that law between the, the ceremony and going to the reception. Although I will say that after a wedding, getting ready for the reception, it's going to be a long night. Caffeine is a really good idea. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely.
do you guys have travel restrictions? Do you have guest restrictions? Is it, do you only serve big or little weddings? Um, what are those kind of like limitations if you guys even have any? We really don't have any limitations as far as like the guest count. Um, but as far as location, because we are traveling, we're, you know, clearly central Ohio and we'll travel up to an hour outside of central Ohio, depending on the, the direction. And again, the event, we're just happy to serve and, and it shows in our customization because we really want to make it about their event and that, and that group of people. So, um, so don't hesitate to reach out because, you know, we try to do the best to accommodate everyone. If you're looking to really take your reception up to an 11, I don't know if you could find a better way than reaching out to Laura and Angela. Their customization options and service are truly top notch. So you can find us on our website at lulumobilecoffee.com and then our Facebook just at Lulu and Co. And then is that where we're also able to reach out to see like what dates you have available and how to get you booked for our wedding and stuff like that? Yeah, you'll personally talk to actually either one of us. Oh, yes. Wonderful. And at phone number 740-624-5987. I do most of the scheduling um, and I would be happy to get you on our books for the season. Laura, Angela, thank you both so much for joining us and sharing us all your amazing creations. I can't wait to see how you continue to serve others with your businesses. And even though you're just getting started, I can tell you're going to do great big things. So now that we've covered treats and finally put an end to this whole kibosh on the mat cake smashing debacle, we can start thinking about some more ways to make our reception unforgettable. On our next episode, we're going to be talking with some people who are in the business of entertaining. I'm just so excited because this one, we have some really special guests and you do not want to miss it. So I hope you'll join us next time. And until then, I'm Bailey and thanks for listening to She Said Yes. She Said Yes is presented by White of Dublin. To learn more about how they make your wedding dress experience comfortable, personal, and all about you, visit whitebridalboutiques.com. Produced and distributed by River Radio Ministries. To find more podcasts like this one, visit riverradio.com. Make sure you follow us wherever you're listening now. And if you like what you're hearing, tell a friend so they can listen too.